All right, so let's go over a quick review of access deviation and mean access or mean access angle on your EKG, since that's the most, that seems to be the hardest subject for people to grasp and understand, and it's on every single test. So if you didn't get it for the first test, we'll go over it for this test, and you better as hell get it for this test, and also for next test, because it's the same exact questions, same style, so there's no reason to miss it. Okay, so this is a typical 12 week EKG. Not really typical, because this dude has something, something crazy going on in his pre-coral leads with big ass voltage as Q wave. So he's probably had a heart attack at some point in his life. But of course we can't tell that. But so if you're looking for the mean axis or the axis deviation, well, first off, when you first see a 12 lead EKG, the first thing you want to look at is access deviation, right? Because a 12 lead an EKG, all it is is electrical stimulation through the heart. You can just tell the electrical, how the heart is doing le le electrically, electronically, if you want to say that. You can't tell anything about how well it's beating or how well it's elast and stuff like that, how strong it is. You can just tell how strong the signal is to the heart and if you have electrical signal going through the heart. So what access deviation is, is it's a way to tell exactly where the signal is moving in the heart because it's supposed to go from the SA node to the, 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 vent, the left ventricular. So diagonally down the heart so pretty much like you got your little heart whatever and it's supposed to go like this that's what it's supposed to do so that's what we expect but uh, based on the 12 lead based on the ekg and what certain leads are doing with the with the deflections with the, the peaks going up or down is we can tell if it's going like this if it's going like this whatever or if it's doing something like that whatever so we can tell whatever the hell it's doing so I'll clear off all this mess first. Okay. So whenever you want to find the axis deviation, always look at lead one. So this lead and lead AVF. Do not look anywhere else. Look anywhere else, you'll fuck yourself up and you'll get totally wrong, even if you have the concept right. And never look over here with the pre-core leads. Never look at these leads when you're trying to find axis deviation or mean axis angle. Only look at these when you're looking for the transition zone or if they have left ventricular hypertrophy or, or right ventricular hypertrophy will even be in the, the extremity leads or the limb leads. So you only want to look at lead one and lead AVF. Okay, so again, since I don't have the best products, so I have to keep doing a new picture every time I want to erase. But again, you look at lead one and lead AVF. So what you want to look for is the highest deflection. Now, I know the book or it's saying class, maybe not what you're saying class, but the book probably say you look for the Q wave, I mean the S wave. You want to see if it's positive or negative, but really you're looking for the highest deflection. So like in this instance, in, in this example, you can't really tell if the S wave, oh sorry, the R wave, is positive, more positive than the Q wave, Q R, oh the S wave, sorry, again. You can't really tell. In this live, you can, you can definitely tell what is more positive. You can definitely tell that the R, the R wave is a lot more positive. But again, you can't really tell. But you want to look at the biggest deflection. So in, in lead one case, the biggest deflection is positive. It's slightly more positive than it is negative. So this up is slightly higher than it is down. Again, I can't zoom in. And again, I have to raise the whole thing to do anything. But essentially, lead one is positive so it's a positive deflection mostly lead AVF you can easily see that that's mostly positive so you have a positive in lead one and a positive lead AVF so now you have to know all the angles you erase it draw your pretty little circle you have to know the circle because if you miss the circle up you'll miss everything so lead one is right here it's zero degrees lead two we don't care about but well, it's actually written on the thing the lead one is right there, lead AVF is right here, 90 degrees down. So lead two is right there, blah, blah. Okay, so since lead one is positive, that means the angle must be going towards lead one, right? Because if it's going towards an angle, it's a positive deflection. So that means it must be going towards it somewhere like this, heading towards zero. Because if it's going away from it, like this way, then lead one would be negative. If it's going this way, lead one could still be positive. If it's going this way, lead one has to be negative because it's going away from lead one, right? So, and then AVF is also positive. 
So that means it has to be going towards AVF. So it has to be going either down or somewhat down. So it can be going again this way. Can't be going this way because it'll be AVF will be negative. AVF will be negative because it's going away from it. AVF will be positive. So where does it record both a positive deflection for AVF and for lead one? That will be in right here because AVF will be positive and lead one will be positive. So this is normal access deviation. So that means if AVF is positive and lead one is mostly positive, your normal access deviated. Now if, now say lead one was negative, but AVF was a positive deflection. So going back to that little picture, say lead one was more negative than it was positive. That must mean that it's going away from lead one. So it can be going either this way, which I'm not going to draw, so I have to erase again, but it can be going either this way towards lead two, well, I guess I have to draw so you can see it, but it can be going this way, away from lead one to be negative, or it can be going this way to be negative. Can't be going this way, because if it's going this way, that's kind of towards lead one also, so that'll kind of be positive. But this is going away from lead one, so lead one will be negative. It's going towards AVF, so AVF will be positive. So thus, it will be here. This is left axis deviation. Wait. Sorry, I think I said that wrong, but again, this is normal axis deviation. Lead one being positive, AVF being positive. So we'll just skip that right now because for some reason I can't remember that. So say they're both negative. They're both negative, it's going away from lead one and it's going away from AVF. So it has to be doing this. And this is called extreme right. This is very rare if this happens because what this means is the signal is literally going like the SA node is up in the right hand part of the heart. So we'll draw a little heart, nice cool little box. SA node right here, that means the signal is literally doing this and going backwards. And that's not what it's supposed to be doing. You want it to be doing this, going this way. That will be a normal axis deviation. So that's good. Now, if AVF was negative, but lead one was positive, that means it's going like this because it's going away from AVF, right? So that's negative and going towards AV, going lead one. So it'll be positive. Okay, sorry. So this would be left axis deviation. This would be extreme right. I'm not extreme right, sorry. It would be right axis deviation. Sorry, don't want to erase it because I'll erase everything. But essentially, that's how you find the axis deviation. So now, once you find this deviation, it's very important to note what it is. So let's say, in this case, in this dude's case, he's normal axis deviation. So we know he's somewhere. We know his angle is going somewhere between zero degrees and nine degrees. We don't know exactly what it's doing, but we know it's in between that range. Now to find the mean access, don't know why I did this because I'm going to have to erase this anyways and bring up this guy. But to find the mean access deviation, what we want to do is find the wave, again, not looking in here. What we want to do is find the wave that is mostly biphasic. This one is easy. Lead one is mostly biphasic. In some instances, it's not going to be clear which one's biphasic. It's not going to be like straight cookie cut like this, where it's this obvious, but it's the one that's closest to being biphasic. So lead one's biphasic. So what that means again, biphasic means it's going parallel to lead one. That's what a biphasic wave means. So that means the angle is going somewhere parallel to lead one. Lead one is zero degrees. So, it mu so it's going somewhere. So lead one is parallel. So that means it's somewhere, it's either negative nine degrees or nine degrees it's parallel to lead one or the biphasic wave. So our, our axis is either negative nine degrees or 90 degrees. So which one is it? So we have two choices. But we, all, we already know that it's normal axis. We already know that his, he's normal deviation. So only positives are in the normal range from zero to 90. So that eliminates negative 90. So only 90 can be it. So his axis deviation is normal. His mean axis is nine degrees. So let's take another example. So say that lead one was negative or mostly negative in lead two. Uh, I don't have a, yeah, say lead one was mostly negative. So that means it's going away from lead one and lead AVF is positive. So that means it's this, it's a right axis deviation because AVF is positive, so it's going towards it. 
lead one is negative, so it's going away from it. And let's say the most biphasic wave is lead two. So it's mostly biphasic. So what that means is it's, per it's perpendicular to lead two. So that means the mean axis is perpendicular to lead two. Lead two is 60 degrees. This is why you need, you need to know this circle and be able to draw it. You not just know the actual angles of like, oh, lead two is 60 degrees, lead three is 120 degrees. You have to know what the corresponding negative is. So like in this instance, lead two is 60 degrees. It's corresponding negative is 120 degrees. The reason you have to know this is because you can't draw a perpendicular line if you think that the corresponding negative to 60 degrees is 150. Because then when you draw it, it'll look like this, and that's fucked up, and that's not right. So clear again. So it's perpendicular to this angle. So it can either be... So again, that's why you need also to be able to draw straight lines, which I didn't really draw, but perpendicular to this will be 120 or negative 60, because you know the exact angle. Again, it has to be in this range, so it's probably 120. So again, can't stress it enough, no, be able to draw this circle, know the corresponding angles to it, so like 60 degrees. Everyone probably knows the main leads, what they are, but also know, yes, that's not it, AVL, sorry. But also know the corresponding negative lead, such so as 60 degrees corresponds to 120, 90, obviously 90, that's very easy to draw, 120 corresponds to negative 60, so basically, draw this every single day, that's what I would do, to memorize it and know what it is. And know how to do access deviation and mean access because they're on every single damn test. And it's the same exact questions. It's the same concept. Once you can do one question, you can do all the questions. You can't throw anything new at you. So in other videos, I'll go over more things. Good old arrhythmias. Love arrhythmias, so we'll go over that and everything on the next videos.